spend a lot of time talking about Matthew Vanderpool and Wout Van Aert, the two childhood phenoms, lifelong rivals across multiple disciplines who have now turned to road racing and turned the entire world tour on its head because they can seemingly do everything. They can time trial, they can sprint, they can climb, and they know how to drive a bike. And the combination of all of those assets has turned them into classics winning machines. There is another rider who can also time trial, climb, sprint, and drive a bike really damn well. But we're not that used to talking about him as a classic winning machine. I am, of course, talking about Julian Alphilippe, a rider we are much more accustomed to talking about in July when he is giving Team Ineos fits across the various mountain ranges of France. Principal uh, task at hand, of course, is to shake Alaphilippe and they're not doing it. Once a rider spends more than a couple days in the yellow jersey at the Tour de France, they tend to focus on winning it, often at the expense of winning pretty much any other race throughout the year. Not Julian Alphilippe, though, and we should all be grateful. Despite Julian Alphilippe's nearly two week long run in the yellow jersey, in the Tour de France in 2019, he has turned himself into a classics winning machine. Winner of Milano San Remo, winner of Strada Bianche, winner of Flesh Wallone, winner of De Brabant's Appeal, and oh yeah, winner of the World Championships. You could say Julian Alphilippe makes winning look easy. That isn't exactly quite right though. Alaphilippe goes, Julian Alaphilippe, Pogaccia is, ooh, almost a touch of wheels. Alaphilippe goes for the line, the world champion, does he get beaten on the line by Roglic? In 2020, Julian Alaphilippe suffered two rather embarrassing losses. First at Liège, best on Liège, Julian Alaphilippe celebrated too early, allowing Primoz Roglic to pip him at the line. To add insult to injury, he ended up being relegated for an errant sprint putting him in fifth place. Then at the Tour of Flanders, Julian Alaphilippe crashed himself out of the winning breakaway with Matthew Vanderpool and Wout van Aert by running into the back of a motorcycle. Now Julian Alaphilippe says that he feels no pressure going into the 2020 Tour of Flanders, but his teammates and competitors alike don't necessarily believe that. He is world champion, he won a lot of nice races last year and he will win uh, some nice races this year. Every race he starts he can win. I think uh, this year he will be again uh, close, uh, close in the finish. Julian is uh, always going to race to win it. This is his mentality and uh, it will not be different with Tour of Flanders. We know that Julian Alphilippe will be going to the Tour of Flanders this weekend looking to entertain the world, but I for one think that he is going back to do one better. I think that he is going to the Tour of Flanders for revenge, and I think that he has the legs to take a very decisive victory. Matthew Vanderpoel and Wout van Aert, the cyclocross stars, they are clear favorites, but let's not forget, Julian Alphilippe raced cyclocross too. His name belongs right up there alongside Matthew Vanderpoel and Wout van Aert, and I think that he has something to prove after the way that he ended his 2020 Tour of Flanders. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am actually on a very important Tour of Flanders related errand at the moment. Precious cargo in there. Now, if you know me or if you have been following along with Flow Bikes, you might know that I am not a big beer drinker. You might also know that that rule flies out the window on Tour of Flanders weekend. I have gotten some Belgian beers, and even though I am rooting for a Frenchman this year, I am going to be sitting back and watching all the action from the Tour of Flanders on Flow Bikes this Sunday. Please do tune in. It is a once in a year show, folks.